Shalom. Kahalim la Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakakadash. Our praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Europe is a man-made continent. So we're going to show using the scriptures that Europe was, or the concept of Europe was added to the equation. It's not a separate, distinct landmass. Asia is. And when you look at the countries in Europe, they're connected to the major landmass of Asia. <clears throat> so I want to go here first. Let's go to, um, so these are conquered Japhetic lands and what we know today as Europe. These lands originally belonged to Japheth, dark-skinned people of the Minoans and the Etruscans, <laughs> like Rome, those cities, Greece, Wisdom of Solomon 1, excuse me, 1 Maccabees 1, verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. <laughs> so this is, this is the first time the Edomites established a stronghold on the earth in the land areas of Japheth, Philip of Macedonia. So Alexander the Greek conquered these lands. <clears throat> and these would be territories or areas where the Israelites would be scattered. <clears throat> See right here. Cappadocia, Galatia, Antioch, Lycia, Diotira. So this area here is called, we're looking at Asia right here. So this particular region is Turkey. On the north of its border is the Black Sea, and to the south of its border is the Mediterranean Sea. These are Apostle Paul's journeys. Cyprus. Okay. Let's go back. Achaia is where Paul journeyed. This is the route of Paul's journeys. Tartum. Rome. Israelites are scattered into these areas, so the epistles that Paul wrote were to the Israelites that were scattered in these areas. <clears throat> and again, historically Japhetic land, so when the Greeks took over this covers the 400 year period under the Greeks. The Israelites that were called Greeks did not know their nationality. But usually when you see the term Grecian, they knew that they were Israelites being called Grecian. The footprint of the Greek empire. Let's go here. I'm going to delve a little deeper into this Europe. This term 
Europe did not start gaining popularity until around the 6th century BC. This term that we use today, Europe, named after a mythological pagan Greek goddess, Europa. <coughs> but when explaining the continent or major landmass of Asia, it's important to ensure that listeners know that these Japhetic lands are connected to that landmass of Asia. This is one of the reasons why they called it so-called Euro-Asia, because Euro or Europa is a made-up name after a pagan Greek goddess, Europa, right here. So the Romans would take the same pagan goddess and call her Diana, that the Israelites were worshiping at Ephesus. The Ephesians were one of Paul's epistles were written to. See, let's go here. <clears throat> See, Europa. Remember, under the Greeks. <clears throat> Remember, let's go back to this. <clears throat> First Maccabees 1, verse 1. One, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So we know that under the Medo-Persian Empire, they had 127 provinces. So this was a huge beast <laughs> and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Notice the scriptures use Greece, its ancient name, Macedonia. We're not going to find Europe. But again, when teaching it, in order to gain edification, these lands are connected to that landmass of Asia. But these are historically lands of Japheth, which were dark-skinned people, the original Greeks, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. So he went throughout these lands, conquering to the ends of the earth. So remember, he took down the 127 provinces under the Medo-Persians. <laughs> So this is what we call Asia. And the uh, beloved elder Malcolm went into this today and really already covered it in detail. And I just wanted to provide some clarity on this term, Euro-Asia, which is a made-up term, just like Europe is, and Europa, after a pagan Greek goddess, Europa. So again, stemming back from the Greek conquest, which started with Alexander the Greek, the son of Philip of Macedonia. <clears throat> See, in Greek mythology, Europa was a Phoenician princess from Tyre, Lebanon, and mother of King Minos of Crete, the continent of Europe. See, <coughs> So this term began, began to gain popularity around the 6th century BC. But it's not an ancient name or an original name. It's pagan that stemmed from the Greek conquest. <clears throat> See, let's go here. Psalms 49 and 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations 
They called their lands after their own names. Hence, Greek goddess Europa, which started under the Greek conquest, starting with Alexander the Greek, really before him, <laughs> his father, Philip, and then later on through the four generals of Alexander the Greek, Lysimachus, or Lycomachus, or Lysimachus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. <coughs> so these are pagan names. Remember, Europe, so-called, is a conquered Japhetic region. It's not a standalone major continent like Africa, Asia, South America, North America, and Australia, and Antarctica. <clears throat> so this is what it stems from. It's a made-up name. But in order to edify or help understand that these Japhetic lands are connected to Asia, the term so-called Euro-Asia is used to show that these Japhetic lands are connected to that major landmass. <clears throat> Like here. But it's a made up term for edification purposes. <clears throat> See, let's read some of this here. Right here. <clears throat> See, so remember the Edomites came out of Mount Seir, but they're trying to distinguish themselves as a major people chosen underneath white supremacy where the Edomites begin to gain dominance under the Greeks. So that's what they did. <laughs> they came out of the caves or the mountains or Mount Seir. We'll get that. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's an illusion of power. See? Eurasia, so-called, continental area on earth comprising of Europe and Asia. No, Japhetic lands that are connected to Asia. Because Asia starts right there at, <clears throat> right here. Asia Minor. It's even on the map. This is Turkey modern day. And <clears throat> it's, it's showing it on here. Well, look at that. Israel. Jerusalem, even Jordan. See? <clears throat> right here. <clears throat> so this is where Esau dwelt. Let's get that. But Asia is in the Bible along with the original names like Cyprus, Cappadocia, Athens, or Greece. Let's go here, Deuteronomy 2, verse 7. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through his great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing, the Israelites, in their journeys. Verse 8. And when we pass by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath, and from Ezion Geber, we turn and pass by the way of the wilderness of Moab. <coughs> So let's visit that area right here. This is Mount Seir, which is modern day Jordan, Petra, Jordan. <clears throat> There's the blown up picture of it. Now, again, this is all a part of the major continent of Asia. They added the Euro part. Under the starting as early as 6 BC, in the uh, excuse me, 
the 6th century B.C. <clears throat> Conquered Japhetic lands. So this is Mount Seir. Petra Jordan today. Let's go here to... <clears throat> see? So these... um. These biblical names are ancient names. <clears throat> First Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So these are original ancient names. Asia, let's go into that. <clears throat> See, Asia, Asia Minor, which is Turkey, which I showed, we'll go back to it right here. These are Paul's documented journeys, writing epistles to the Israelites that are scattered in these regions. So this Turkey, they call it, they call Turkey Europe. Matter of fact, it's a NATO ally, but it's in bed with Gog and Magog, Russia, modern day. Modern day Russia, formerly Soviet Union, United Soviet Socialist Republics, or USSR, encompassed some of these ancient Medo Persian lands, like Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. <clears throat> Tajikistan, so forth and so on. <clears throat> so, these are the journeys of Paul and wrote epistles to the Israelites scattered throughout Asia, Asia Minor. <clears throat> and the footprint of the Greco Roman Empire. Right here, Corinth. We can see Corinth, Athens in the center. Ephesus, the Ephesians. They were worshiping the Greek goddess Europa or Athena as another name in the Greek tongue, Demeter. But under the Romans, she was called Diana, <clears throat> Thyatira, right there. Philadelphia, Lydicia, Phrygia, Lycia, see, Tar Tarsus, that's right there, Cyprus, these were all formerly Greek territories that Rome would later conquer. <clears throat> Damascus. Anyway, yep, we mentioned Cappadocia. See, Paul's journeys. <laughs> Let's go back to 1 Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Hamashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. So we spent or made some travels to Turkey, Asia Minor, if you will. Well, that's what it's called today, even back then. But these were areas that were that are a part of the northwestern part of Asia, which includes Israel, Jordan, Jerusalem. Matter of fact, let's go here. Let's read this first. Under Alexander the Greek, and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. So he conquered the 120 something odd provinces under the Medo Persians. <clears throat> he conquered those areas, but they had a smaller 
geographical footprint after they conquered the Persians. <clears throat> Let me go to, um, <clears throat> where did I want to go from here? Um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Hmm. Uh, let it come back to me. Greece, Persians, and the Medes. All right, let's go here to this one here. Remove. Deuteronomy. Let's go to, <laughs> let's read this one. Proverbs 22 and 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. So these ancient lands that were under Japheth, under Shem, under Ham, these are their lots. <clears throat> Even within the 12 tribes of Israel, there's going to be assigned territorial lots going into the kingdom to come. Everything is going to be set back in order. Deuteronomy 27. Let's read this one. Deuteronomy 23 and 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. So under Alexander the Greek, under the Greeks and the Romans, they conquered these land masses <laughs> and renamed them after their own names, after their pagan gods and goddesses, and after their kings. So even Ham, this area right here, going into Egypt, they made up the term Middle East. That's another made up term. The Middle East. There was no such thing. I think that was created in the late 1800s. Let's see here real quick. Origin of the term Middle East. Originally coined in the late 19th century by the British. <laughs> Yeah, it was used by the British India Company on the established trade. I remember reading about that a while back. Yep, right here. The term Middle East may have originated in the 1850s in the British India office. However, it became more widely known when American naval strategist named Alfred Thayer Mahan or Mahan, used the term in 1902 to designate the area between Arabia and India. So that's even tapping into another landmass of Ham. See, let's go here. Notice Asia is separated by the Red Sea, the Suez Canal. <clears throat> let's go here to the scriptures. Yep, right here. <clears throat> Psalms 105. Yep, the book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So that Egypt is a part of a major continent or landmass, Ham, <clears throat> which was about a two to three days journey. <clears throat> so this, these are so-called Asian countries. Look how big this landmass is, going all the way up to northwestern Asia, which includes Turkey, Syria. Lebanon, Israel, Jerusalem, even Cyprus. 
So these are not European lands, but they are so-called Europe or European. <clears throat> and then they created the term Euro-Asia, <clears throat> which is made up after a false name under Greek mythology and pagan goddess Europa. So that term Middle East is even made up. <clears throat> so right here, we're looking at the Mediterranean Sea area, which includes Asia Minor, the ancient Japhetic lands, Thrace, Macedonia, Italy, Sicily, Archaea, Cyprus, Crete, and then they're calling Asia Minor, Turkey, they're even calling that Europe, which is total confusion. <clears throat> Massive confusion. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, Petra, which, which is the modern day area of Jordan. Let's get this one. I think it's um, Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So creating this term of <coughs> Europe from a pagan goddess Europa helps to feed into a so-called white supremacist or Edomite supremacist narrative, which is made up. I think I've covered everything. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the point. There was one more scripture that came to mind. It just slipped my mind, so it probably wasn't meant for it to come out. Man, it was right on the tip of my tongue. Well, I think we covered the point. <clears throat> okay, we'll go ahead and end it there. But yeah, I just wanted to um to highlight that. I'm looking at this from a big picture. Asia is a huge landmass. I mean, it's it's humongous. <clears throat> and then even Africa is a major continent and landmass, along with South America, North America, Australia. Let's go here to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> Verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So every nation has their lot, and these nations are made to serve the Israelites. <laughs> Everything is going to be set back in that order. When Yahushai redoes or redo the shuffle, if you will. <clears throat> so we're not supposed to move a nation's landmarks or ancient landmarks. I'll go ahead and end it there. Something in here. Yeah. Let's read this real quick. <clears throat> The concepts of Europe and Asia as distinct continents date back to antiquity, but their borders have historically been subject to change. See, they made it up. <clears throat> For example, to the ancient Greeks, Asia originally included Africa, but they classified it as Europe. So they're just mixing and changing landmarks which is against the scriptures. Eurasia is connected to Africa at the Suez Canal. No, Asia is connected to Africa by the Suez Canal. <clears throat> All right, we'll go ahead and end it there. So hopefully this has been 
edifying lesson of praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, or Kakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call me Yeshurala and the blood of all. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham, Shalom.